Excellent. What's up guys, welcome to Paul's Hardware. Today I'm gonna to be doing a brand new build. This is a specialty build. It's actually a NAS, Network Detached Storage. And I have a confession to make, I've actually not been running a NAS uh, here at home at, at pretty much at all. So this is gonna solve some problems for me, but uh, I'll, I'll go into some of the features of the NAS later. I'm gonna focus on the hardware and get the system put together for today. So I'm gonna be installing free NAS as mentioned. It uses a ZFS file system, file system which features triple redundancy. Uh, beyond that, I'm using some uh, reused hardware, so I have parts that I already had on hand, which is often a very common use case for a NAS. Uh, so for instance, I have a Z77i Deluxe uh, motherboard here from ASUS with an Intel Core i3-2105. This is a Sandy Bridge processor, so it's got a few years of use in it already, but it's still going to do a great job. Uh, power supply is pretty overkill. This is a, actually the one newest part of the, of the build, which is an RM850X from Corsair, 80 plus gold. Again, overkill, but this should be able to run in fanless mode with the amount of power that this whole system is going to be drawing. Fractal node 304 case. Nice and tiny, plenty of room for all the hard drives they'll be putting in. The hard drives, by the way, are gonna be WD Red drives, which are made for NAS use, and you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to that if you're picking out your hard drives for your NAS. NAS drives are definitely the way you wanna go. I got four of those, they're not right here right now because they're still copying footage uh, off of my media center, which I'm gonna be swapping them out from. Lastly, of course, you gotta have some memory, so I went ahead and got the Crucial Ballist. Don't do it, Paul. I was it's just, the wrong this, RAM. This is just a little four gig kit of Crucial Ballistics. That That's should be the problem. You're gonna be running ZFS. ZFS is gonna need about one gigabyte of RAM per terabyte of hard drive space. Oh. So I brought with me some Fury HyperX. That, that made it sound like they paid for this. It does. I paid for this. I paid for this. I brought it to you, Paul. It, you arrived in the nick of time, too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank oh, you. I drove like a, a Fury. Thank you. Logan from Tech Syndicate. Um, this is this is this is a fa fantastic Fury HyperX. Uh, so yeah, that's about 16 gigabytes, 16 which is what you're going to be using in your system. Because I got 16 terabytes of storage. Yeah, that'll make it work out just that's fine perfect. for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's uh, I guess my work's done here. How, how did you know I was building a NAS right now? Oh, uh, Kane told me. How did Kane know I was building a NAS right now? Logan worked tirelessly into the night for hours on end. I, I assume it was hours. It's a time lapse, so it's hard to tell. Maybe it was just a few minutes, but uh, I woke the next morning. I was in a daze. Logan was gone, but on the dining room table was the NAS in its most recent form, ready for the next step. Now, uh, the step I was not able to take the day before when Logan was actually here was to install the drives themselves. Four four terabyte WD red NAS drives these were actually removed from my HTPC in my living room, which I did a video on last year. They've been doing a great job there. It's given me effectively about 11 terabytes of usable storage, but I've only actually ever used more about three or four on that system. So my next step was to remove those drives. And what I had set up the day before was a big old copy from the internal RAID 5 array that those four drives were in over to an external drive, or a drive that I had set up externally, which is a Hitachi HGST Ultrastar Helium 6 terabyte drive. This is an enterprise drive, nice and fast, nice and reliable, and I'm gonna pop this as a single drive into my HTPC. This will be handling DVR duties, as well as mass storage over there, and all the uh, WD Red drives are coming out to go in the NAS. And now, as you can see, I have installed those WD red drives into the NAS. Uh, I went ahead and removed the middle rack from the, uh, the Node 304 here in order to give a single drive spacing in between each drive since there's four. So I actually installed these two on the outside of the cage to give you one here, space, one here, space, one here, space, and one here. Working out pretty good. I just need to do the final steps here to wire up those drives 
power on the system, and then we will go forward with uh, the thing that Logan left me, other than a thorough Loganing, was uh, these two little, little USB drives right here. So for FreeNAS, uh, we actually need an installer, and we need a drive to run off of. This is the installer, and Logan already took the time to create that, and then install FreeNAS onto this USB. This is the USB drive that we're going to be running off of. It's USB 3, and uh, it's nothing too special, but it is definitely recommended to get uh, a USB drive or a separate small drive to run the OS off of. Okay, that's about all I know about FreeNAS so far. Let's go ahead and finish out this build. So I got the drives all wired up and I wanted to do one last little once over of the hardware here before I move on to the software. Um, first off, I wanted to keep this little USB internally that it's going to run off of. I didn't want it sticking out the back here. So uh, I didn't have a simple USB 2.0 internal like a, a bracket header. I feel like I should have lots of those lying around but instead I had to go with a kind of workaround which is a USB 3.0 header and then I have this adapter. Um, that goes USB 3.0 to USB 2.0. So it's a little bit of a waste of USB 3.0 header, but I actually have, I found like three of those, but none of the USB 2.0s around. And it's just, just kind of how it goes with the computer parts. One other thing here uh, is the cable management, of course, which is looking, I don't know, it's, it's like in between for an ITX build. Around on this side, it's definitely pretty mishmashy. But the main uh, important things that I'm worrying about here is that I have clear channels here between the drives for those two uh, front intake fans on the front to push air back, uh, which I do. It's a little bit blocked over on this side, but uh, open for the most part. The center area is also quite clear and open, so that's important. And I got the exhaust at the back, so it's going to be pulling any hot air out of there. And then uh, the power supply, fortunately, is kind of on its own little system here, and it'll exhaust out the side via the panel that's on the side of the Node 304. Okay, one last thing, and this is a pretty important one that I had a sneaking suspicion about. Now, I don't know what tipped me off that this might be the case, but if you're working with older hardware or just hardware that you've had around for a while, you shouldn't always assume everything is, is the way it should be. So, for example, I have this stock heatsink fan on this... Uh, on this board here, and I did use this board in my HTPC for quite a while before I built the new one uh, about a year ago. Uh, I decided to pull this off just to double check, and thank God I did, because there's no freaking thermal paste on this thing, absolutely none. That might have uh, might have been a, a negative impact on my CPU temperatures. So I'm just gonna add some thermal paste, pop this back on, and then uh, we'll get the software up and running before I close out this video. Well, some time has passed since I last worked on this system, but I'm happy to say that with uh, just a little bit of work today and last night, I managed to get uh, FreeNAS installed. It is set up and it seems to be working just fine. Uh, I used the installer that Logan set me up with, uh, and beyond uh, a couple complications that I had, which is mainly just because this board, the motherboard, had been used in a system prior, uh, I had to reset the CMOS and that pretty much cleared up any issues I was having. But um, if you've ever installed Windows before, it was nothing more complicated than uh, switching the boot device over to this, and then after the installation went through, switching the boot device back over to the uh, USB drive that's installed right over there internally, and everything's working just fine. After everything got installed onto that little uh, Gigabyte drive over there, it was uh, just a matter of booting off of that. It will go through and recognize all the hardware. Uh, it looks like it recognized pretty much everything that was in there. Uh, it will prompt you to create a root password, uh, and then it will get you to a point where you have a list of uh, commands on the screen that you can do directly with the system, or you can do what is much more simple and you can switch over to actually just um, using a, a, a web browser on a different computer connected to the same network. It will give you an IP address at the bottom, which will almost always start with 192 as far as I know. When I, uh, yeah, so go there and then it will prompt you to log in. Uh, you can log in using the same login and password that you created as you went through the boot-up process. And now we are into FreeNAS. Um, now I was going to start going through some of the setup processes here. Uh, they do have a wizard, for example, that will kind of guide you through 
um, setting up some of the things like a data pool and that kind of thing and language, all that good thing, all that good stuff. Now my main issue with FreeNAS is really that I, I just haven't used it much before. So here's where uh, any semblance of a tutorial uh, for this video is going to end uh, because I'm mainly comfortable with setting up the hardware side of it. I need to do some dabbling and some messing around with this uh, in the FreeNAS UI. They do have a wizard you can go through, but what I'm actually going to be using is uh, Wendell's video on Tech Syndicate, and I'll link that down in the description. And he goes through kind of some of the basic uh, setup procedures for um, setting up your storage the way you want it and getting it set up so it can handle some of the uh, more advanced functions like uh, backup and all those things. What I really want to do with this NAS in the future, and that's what I will be doing a follow-up video on um, probably in the next couple weeks, is set it up to do some of the really cool things that I know NASes can do. Apart from just being a massive amount of storage that's here at home that I can access to do a bunch of backups on, like dropping all my old video footage onto it or that kind of thing, or old edits that I want to keep. Uh, I will also be using it possibly to tie into my HTPC. I want to take all of the mechanical drives out of the HTPC so it gets dead silent do some backup storage on here with some SSD storage over there. Uh, I want to be able to do uh, a media server on here, of course, so I can have uh, videos as well as music that I can access from other devices around the house, or if I'm on the go, can access them remotely. Um, I want to set this up so I also have remote access when I'm like on the road. So when I've done trips to, like CES or Computex, for example, I don't always have time to edit while I'm there. So I have uh, worked with uh, a couple editors in the past and I would like to have the ability to upload all my footage straight to here and then have my editor who's somewhere else be able to remotely access that to pull the footage off of it so that they can do edits. Uh, and there's lots of other cool things that you can do with a NAS. So if you have a NAS and you have set it up to do something cool um, that you'd like to see me try out, maybe leave that in the comments section down below. Or if you don't know, if you're like, I maybe could a NAS do this, also leave me your questions. because because I am just as curious as you guys probably are. Anyway though, don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Uh, stay tuned for more coverage on the NAS and further developments therein. Don't forget to check out my store where you can purchase shirts like this one as well as mugs and glasses. That's a great way to support me and get yourself some awesome hardware or well, some merchandise in the meantime. And also, uh, if you're just shopping on Amazon, my Amazon links are down in the description too. You can click those before you shop. I get a little kickback and that is a great way to help me out as well just while you're shopping for stuff on Amazon. Thanks again for watching everyone and we'll see you next time.